she called the security on me you guys like she called security on me like <laughs> welcome back to my channel it's your girl susan back with another amazing video if you're new here welcome my name is susan and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back and i hope you guys enjoy this video so today's video is a testimony faith story time video of how god brought me through university you guys know i'm a doctor now and i was studying in china for six years for my medical degree so I wanna share so yeah like i was saying i wanna share my story with you guys my journey with you guys so that if any one of you is going through the same thing or you know someone who's going through the same thing it can be helpful to you and just to encourage you guys to never give up and that god is always working yeah you guys get a drink get some food get a snack I got my lemonade here with me because this is gonna be a bit of a story time so just get comfortable so let's get into it as you all know i started my med school journey in september 2015 it was such a journey because if you guys read my testimony and story on my instagram or in the description box on my graduation blog you guys know that i spent four years after graduating from high school without being in university so this was due to circumstances beyond my control i will share that one day yeah it might be a story time for another day i don't know maybe or maybe not so i wasn't in school i wasn't in uni for four years and it was really a trying time you know you tend to give up or get into bad vices but thank god he kept me and my sister and finally he opened the door for us to go to school that was in september 2015 and me and my older sister both went to school to study in china so she pursued economics i pursued medicine my whole journey of studying medicine was a trial someone i had so many challenges especially like um financially it was so hard to pay school fees and i thought so many times that i was gonna drop out of school because of the same problem but God came through time and time again. So in my first year of uni, I managed to pay for a semester because our school fees were 25,000. That's 25,000 RMB, Chinese currency. Yeah, so I managed to pay for half a semester. That was 12,500. And I also managed to pay my rent for half a semester. And then um, the second semester, there were a bit of hiccups. Um, Dad had some delays in sending the money. So I had to write a letter to the school for them to like extend the time for payment and be understanding of which they did. They were so nice, like they gave me an extension and I managed to pay in the extended time. So in my first year, that's how God came through, not so many hiccups. Um, and yeah, I managed to survive that year and I went into my second year. So in my second year of medical school, I was blessed to get a scholarship. Uh, through hard work and being among like the top 10 in my class so i got a scholarship of 10,000 rmb or 10,000 chinese yuan so it was a half uh, a part scholarship i really planned to use the money for like my tuition to help me so that i don't like stress my dad and my mom to send money so there's a situation that rose up with my older sister at the time she needed some monies for school and all that so i was like i have this money here why not just help her right yeah so that's what i did instead of like i didn't take the money to tuition i instead used it to help my sister part of it i used it to help my sister and then the other part i just paid for my rent my accommodation in advance so that um i don't have to stress about tuition and rent i could just take care of the rent and my sister so i, I helped my sister and i also paid for my rent for one semester and the other money that remained i used for like my personal expenses food clothes that kind of stuff yeah and then when the time for paying school fees came <laughs> you guys um it was really rough because at this time like dad didn't manage to send the money on time he 
was still like i'm um, waiting for some payments and stuff so the money delayed now i didn't have any money like money for my scholarship i used it to like pay my rent and also to help my older sister so i was stuck i was like yo what happens now and to make matters worse my school wasn't understanding like because i had the same okay not the same problem but like i had asked them for an extension before in my first year so now they didn't want to like understand this led to my visa expiring my visa actually expired for the first time in china and i was so distraught because i i would hear stories of what happens to students when their visas expire and going to jail and paying monies every day to stay in the country and all that stuff so i was really really scared when my visa expired but none of that stuff happened to me guys like i didn't pay any money i wasn't fined like i wasn't put in prison none of that happened and i just thank god so yeah my visa expired and then i was getting like letters from the school office telling me that if i don't pay by so and like i'm gonna have to like forfeit my studies and leave school and all that stuff so it was really really depressing and traumatizing because like all i think all my friends all my classmates at the time had already paid and i was the only one who hadn't paid my tuition fee so i really felt so alone and like i had so many questions i was asking god why and all this stuff so god being god that he is he did come through because at home everyone knew what was going going on right and dad was still like struggling to like find the money to send for me so my mom had this friend of hers um who i don't know but it, i think it's just how god wanted it to be so my mom had this friend um at the time when my mom was still alive she had this friend of hers who she went to the the day before like the final time because the school had given us a final time for paying before they like make us sign uh, some letters to say we're forfeiting school and all that so the day before the school gave us those letters my mom went to this friend's office in town and she told him the situation and you guys the man immediately removed the money i think it should have been like i think two thousand five hundred dollars or so i'm not sure but the money was like more than enough to cover my tuition it could even tip over and cover like part of my other like expenses the man sent that money directly into the school account and it reflected just a few hours before the deadline that the school had given us that's how that money was sent and and that's how i survived that second year like god came through i was so shocked like he worked in the last minute you guys like he came through in the last second like hey like last minute like that's how i survived then at this time in my second year because i saw all these troubles i was going through right so i decided to start looking for a job it was really hectic like i had to do you know like you guys actually working by faith like you know the scripture it says faith without works is dead like i really had to like work because i remember what i used to do like i would just dress up get up from my dorm room because where we were staying um nearby there were like some restaurants and some cafes so what i would do i'll just walk into those cafes and restaurants and ask for their manager tell them that i needed a job me being a black student in china and we all know that students in china are not allowed to work right so i would go by faith you guys like i was just going to a restaurant uh and ask for a job i would go into a cafe and ask for a job and then i managed to get a job as like a waitress yeah also there's this cafe that i went to and i found this chinese lady who happens to be a christian she was so good to me she hired me i would take care of her cafe her shop i could go there and study while i'm working like she was just so nice it was just a nice time in my life I just placed her there and i know yeah because this lady happened to help me later on in my school in my studies as i tell this story and you guys will understand i was juggling like three jobs i think and then also i got into english teaching i was working as an english teacher that was actually one of my first jobs in china the first job i had was teaching english to little chinese kids so in my third year in my first semester god actually made a way for me he blessed me with a job so i this kind of job it was actually far from my school it was in another town yeah two hours away i think yeah so i would have to like wake up early every weekend and get on a bus and go to the the school and then teach for the weekend and come back that's how the job was then on the holidays like the summer holiday winter holiday i would go for like a month or two and teach and then come back so god blessed me with that job and my employers were also so nice they were really nice chinese people 
god bless that couple over there <laughs> yeah so they helped me a lot and uh with the money that i made i made 10,000 rimb for the summer holiday tuitions that i went for like teaching the job so with that job i managed to pay school fees for my first semester yeah so i made the 10,000 from that job plus some other jobs that i had i combined the money and i had about like i think it was about 13,500 yuan yeah of which i paid my tuition fee for one semester that was six months so i paid 12,500 and then the remaining 1,000 i think i like used some of it for expenses paying some electricity bills and some i think other stuff yeah so that's how i survived in my my third year first semester at that time in my third year they weren't like strict on the rent like so i didn't pay rent in the first semester of third year i only paid it in the second semester of my third year so i had to pay like the whole year rent for that third year so that's how i survived my third year first semester for my second semester of third year i didn't have any money uh, there was no summer job to make such a big amount of money the jobs i was having were not like enough to save up so much money like it would just be like jobs to like help with expenses and my upkeep and buying food and that stuff i was in a crisis again <laughs> that's in my third year second semester again my school wasn't understanding because i had the same problem now it was like the second time happening like the second time that i had a really really bad situation crisis and so they didn't want to like extend the time for the deadline for payments and so my visa expired again for the second time you guys like at this point i was just like god what is happening right now is there something wrong that i'm doing is there some sin that i did like what's happening so god being god came through again in a way that i wouldn't even have thought remember i mentioned that as i was looking for jobs i went to this cafe and i met this chinese lady who happened to be a christian and she employed me in her cafe shop right yeah so this same lady offered to pay my remaining tuition fees and half of my rent for that semester that's how i managed to like pay my semester fees for that third year second semester and that's how i survived my third year like she really came through like gods used her you guys and I was so humbled, like I didn't even know what to do. I managed to pay and I got my visa extended. So in my fourth year, right, at this point, like the jobs I was having started dwindling. Like I was only like left with, I think, one or two jobs. Yeah, the rest of them, it's like the school closed down. That other job that I had, the school closed down. The other waitressing job, I had stopped it because it was it wasn't safe. Like it would reach a point where I was working so hard. I would get back to my dorm room at zero two a.m in the morning so it wasn't really safe for a girl moving at that time you know like anything can happen to you and even the atmosphere that i was working in you know like i would get hit on by these like foreigners these other guys some white guys black guys like i would get hit on a lot so it, i decided to just stop the job because it wasn't safe so the only jobs that i had left was like two teaching jobs of which i was only going like on the weekend and then the other one i was just going on fridays yeah so the money was not really there you guys like the money i would make was just money like to help me with my expenses with my upkeep with my food my bills it wasn't enough to say like i, I like i can save up and pay rent and pay my tuition like nah so my fourth year came and i was really worried because i knew that i don't have really good jobs and my dad is like still struggling to send money my my parents are still struggling to send money so what am i gonna do like how am i going to survive you know and for sure enough the time for paying school fees came and at this point i already had a reputation with the school uh they already did not like me per se just because i struggled financially and i wouldn't pay school fees on time not because i was a good student like you guys i was a good student i would pass all my exams like i literally never had a single makeup since my first year up to my final year i never failed a single exam you guys just because i struggled financially like these people would not give me like a scholarship even though i would pass good marks i would get like above like 80 percent for a scholarship like and i would apply but they would not consider me just because i struggled financially they already had their favorites who they would give scholarships and people like me who struggled financially though we were good at school wouldn't were not even considered because we already had like a bad look in their eyes anyway fourth year came the time for paying school fees came and i was in a crisis again i didn't know who to go to i didn't know who to ask because at this point like from my first to my fourth year up now like i 
had already been asking all most people i knew like to help and everything and you know i didn't want that thing of like ah uh, here she is again she's come to ask for our money what 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 you know people talk so i didn't really know who to ask at this point i was just stuck and i was really desperate i was really desperate to the point where i i wanted to like give away my passport to a certain person who was gonna give me money and then if i don't pay back their money at a certain time then my passport is gone you guys like it got that bad like that's what students would do like if it gets too bad like they would give their passports in exchange for money or like they would give like laptops phones but i never had a laptop at that time my phone the time the phone i was using at that time was a bad phone so i had nothing to trade for money you get so the only thing i i could think of that i could trade was my passport and i contacted this person who was a little bit shady and dodgy i contacted them like to give them my passport and they give me the tuition fee amount so that i pay my tuition right it got that bad it wouldn't work out that never worked out and i was so distraught because like it was the day the next day was like the deadline that the school had set for school payments and i still did not have the money I remember that day I went to KFC because we had the shopping mall near our school. So I went into KFC upstairs on the balcony. I went and sat there and I cried, you guys. And my friends came. They were telling me like, no, let's go back to school. At least you sleep in school. You can't sleep here, so so and so forth. And I was like, ah, I just, I just didn't want to move. You know, I was just quite. I was just thinking like, what's going to happen to me? What's gonna become of my life right now? What are people gonna say that stuff i was just thinking of like life back home in zambia when like you come back you have been chased from school you you know all that stuff so i spent the night in kfc guys like the the man who was cleaning the the shop you know the time of closing the way they clean shops yeah he literally came to clean the shop and found us sitting there and he just switched off the lights because it was like these people are not moving he switched off the lights i still remained there in that place until like around 0304 when i decided to like walk back to my dorm room that's so why i went back to school i remember i don't think i slept in my room i went to face room yeah i went to face room and that's where i stayed i didn't even go to class on that day like how can you go to class when you're going through that right yeah so i slept in face room then the following day in the morning i didn't want to wake up i remember she woke me up our church pastor he called was it him or his wife i'm not really sure but he, they they called and they asked to speak to me me not knowing faith had told them about the whole situation and everything that was happening um, they told me to go to their home right so i went to their home with faith and we sat there my eyes were swollen at this point because I, I cried for like the whole night, I think. Yeah. So we sat there, they talked to me, they talked to us. And then the pastor just removes this envelope, you guys. And my friend opens the envelope and the money that I needed is there. Like everything is there. And I'm like, at this point, I'm just like, <sighs> like I didn't even know what to say, you guys. Like, like I was. <sighs> I, I don't even know like I, I, I just didn't know like I was just shocked I was confused like God how he gave us the money and he spoke to the school administration the people who are in charge of getting the school fees at the time he spoke to them and they accepted they understood and that's how like we went we went to go and pay and everything and that was like a day before my visa expired I remember because I was like my visa expired twice already and then I was like my visa expiring for the third time I can't take it my prayer was like god i don't want to have an expired visa again and i went to pay and i got my visa extension papers and i managed to extend like on that same day that happened i survived that fourth year and then a little after having that problem this was on a sunday after church i remember we went back to school after church and i i remember this day because the if you check my youtube videos and you check for my very first video on youtube this is actually the that's actually the time that this incident happened on that same day when i danced in church on that first video on my youtube you go check it out yeah i got a call from my dad and he was like um is any of your friends around like i'm asking for their number so i thought it was weird like why is my dad asking for my friends numbers he called on her phone and he talked to her and he told her like everything that had happened and i was still unaware of everything happening like 
he, he told her about like my mom being in an accident and she passed away and that stuff but he told her and so she knew and all my other friends were told and they knew i remember my friends called me to their room that was yvonne's room that's where yvonne was with face and um i don't know i don't know other people who are there but they called me there then they made me sit down and i was like you guys why are you acting weird like what's going on that's how they told me what happened to my mom and i remember like when they told me like you know that thing when something happens but like you think it would never happen to you and then you are like in denial or like you don't feel anything like you're just in shock but that's how i felt at that point like i didn't start crying immediately but i just had a swerve of emotions like i was scared i was angry i was sad like i just can't explain so they told me this then like what after my visa and all this school fees stuff now my mom passes away it was just a sad experience i remember i even stopped sleeping in my room i would just sleep in yvonne's room i stopped going to class like i couldn't go to class for like one week i think my school at the time they gave me a leave from class it was so depressing i would cry a lot i was super emotional i'm telling you <laughs> i cried a lot like the person who was strong was my older sister she was the strong one it was just a rough time like i just couldn't understand why that was happening and now my fifth year right well, almost finished in school and this is now the time that we now had the covid thing happening right the covid thing happened coronavirus coronavirus things were hard again like it was hard for parents to send money to their children because jobs were not there businesses were slowed were closed down so money was hard right i knew like i'm going to go through this again it's just a tough time <laughs> and my jobs were still the same jobs i had not providing much money just for sustenance and stuff first semester fifth year i didn't have any money i literally had to ask people again for money i hated doing that but god came through again the same chinese lady that helped me in my third year yeah in my third year she came and helped me again with some of with some monies so i was able to like combine the monies that she helped me with with some other money that i like acquired from people and that's how like i paid my school fees for that first semester and then for my second semester my dad's friend came through this man knew us since we were little girls but oh sorry before that happened so fifth year second semester right at this point there's covid happening uh schools are closed down china is closed down <laughs> the world is closed down so we had to learn online i remember we wrote all our exams online and now because like i had this kufi's crisis right i didn't pay my monies on time so at this point i think the school right now they did not like me at all <laughs> because to them i was a troublemaker i was always paying school fees late blah 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 i actually like tried to like plead with them and ask them to like give me time like my dad was saying like i've never failed to pay you i've always paid you right even if i delay i've always paid but they wouldn't understand me right it got to a point whereby they were like if no one pays school fees by so and so you're not gonna be allowed to take the final exam before internship because we're supposed to go back home to do our internship and then we graduate and become doctors so they were like no one is going to be allowed to take the final exam before internship and all that stuff and what so the day of the final exam before internship came i did manage to write the exam right i wrote the exam and i'm pretty sure i passed that exam you guys because like i know i passed i'm smart <laughs> i wrote that exam and then because i did not pay right i was the only one who literally did not pay in my class i was the only one literally yeah so because i did not pay my school fees what did they do to that exam paper they deleted it you guys like they deleted my exam paper just because i did not pay my tuition fees on time like who does that so that's what happened they deleted my paper and i remember prior prior to like having this final exam i did go to my class teacher's office because she was the one in charge of like the payments of the tuition and all that stuff so i went to her office like to go and lead with her like to give me some time to pay and to allow me to write the exam that my dad would send the money and that stuff but she didn't want to listen to me you guys instead do you know what she did she called the security on me you guys like she called security on me like am i a criminal what like so anyway that happened um they deleted my paper all that stuff happened but 
God still came through, right? Like, my dad managed to send me the money, I paid, and everything. Yeah. So, like I said, I went to her office, right? And then I, I wanted to plead with her to give me more time, but she called security on me. She wouldn't listen to me. She didn't want to listen to anything that I was going to say. Mm -hmm. So I left, and you know, I was like, okay. And I began this prayer and fasting. I think, I don't know for how long that was. Maybe it should have been a week or two. I'm not sure. I was just praying and fasting. So at this one day, I was like, okay, so what I'm going to do, because my class teacher doesn't want to listen to me, so I'm going to go to, and also the dean is also like, side dean on her, on her side. So I'm going to go to the, to the university president's office, and I'm going to plead my case with him, and he is going to listen to me. So that's what I did, you guys. I, was I scared? Yes, I was scared. But I remember I walked to the president's office, to that building, and I waited for him. I walked in faith, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I waited for him. I was like, I'm going to see him. Whether he wants to see me or not, I'm going to see him. Then, to my dismay, who comes? The dean, right? And she's like, what are you doing here? You want to see the school president and talk to him? Because if you we don't listen to you, blah, blah, blah. You know the way Chinese people act like all righteous and not listening to you even though they know that they are doing the wrong thing yeah so i just kept quiet i just left her she sent me back i went back she was like you come back uh at so and so time in the afternoon we're going to discuss what happens to you what 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 what, what. so that's how i went back to my dorm room so i went there and the dean was there in the office she talked to me and then now i thought like oh wow she's going to chase me cancel my visa my school is done like when i'm about to finish i'm done for but surprisingly she was telling me that we're going to give you this and this time to pay the money of which you don't you're going home for sure blah 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 that kind of stuff and i was like wow god is good so that's how they extended the time then my dad sent the money i managed to pay and so forth and then also remember i said like that my class teacher called the security on me right so she called me back to her office later and then she even apologized to me like you guys now this is a person that like i did not like her like from first year to my final year she was always the one like stepping on me and like making me go through all that so i came to not like her and i have prayed about it like i have forgiven her i forgive her now it's in the past but at the time i really did not like her so it was shocking when like she called me to her office and you guys she apologized to me for calling security and i was like this this is only god because how can this person like the whole school knows her like you know how chinese people are when they get hard when they're like make up their minds they don't change for nothing for no one so like she apologized to me and i was like wow so she apologized I accepted the apology i paid the monies and all that stuff and now came the time for us to pack up and to start preparing to go back home for our internship right yeah so this was the time of covid remember so like flights were hard to find actually there were not even any flights and now the problem is that when i paid my tuition the visa that the school gave me was like only for 15 days i think my class teacher was like you should find the flight ticket and buy a flight ticket before this 15 days expires otherwise we're going to use the money that you've paid for your tuition to buy you a plane ticket and you'll go back home and you stop your school I saw me, i'm like eh, eh, god you just have to come through because there's no way i'm going back i've come this far i remember like god made it in a way that none of my friends could find flight tickets like there were literally no flight tickets anywhere that's how god would have made it so that when my the time of my 15 days had passed they had to now extend it again to another 15 days because no one had flight tickets so they couldn't chase me they couldn't chase all of us they couldn't chase all the school right yeah so that was god's way of working so they just had to like provide visa extensions for us two flights were arranged by rwanda air uh of which i got on the first flight that was on the 26 27th of july 2020 yeah you guys should check out my travel vlog of coming back home to zambia after four years god made the way he provided those two flights and also the air ticket money was found you guys like i did not even struggle like god just provided the air ticket money once and for all like bah. the dad bought the ticket from there like bah. And it was done and i got on that flight and i came back home like that's how god saw me through from my first to my fifth year you guys and i survived yeah came back home did my internship now it was time for us to graduate right so there was like the remaining 10 percent of tuition fee we were supposed to pay god also provided and yeah that's how i managed to pay for my whole first year to sixth year and now we, we wrote our final exams online for graduation so we wrote the final exams i passed and you guys god is a good god 
because my final exam score was 98% you guys and I got a degree with a distinction like I graduated with a distinction for all my first year to my final year I graduated with a distinction God was faithful like that like for all the trials all the suffering that I went through he came through you guys like he made me graduate like that all to his glory because it couldn't have been my own strength so i'm just thankful to god yeah that's basically my story i know i might have missed out or forgotten most of the things that happened most of the trials the situations the trauma the depression all that i must have forgotten a, a lot of it but i think what i've mentioned now is what's important for you guys to know and it's what god wanted you guys to know and is how god would have had it so this is where my testimony my story ends and i remember i did promise god that i'm gonna testify and tell people like everything is done for me and here i am i've done it so i really hope this video has encouraged you guys has inspired you guys i just want to encourage anyone watching like if you are going through what i went through please don't give up please keep on hanging on to god please believe in him he's gonna make everything work out for you he has plans to prosper you and to give you a future and a hope so even though things look bad right now please believe that god is working even though you cannot see he has your best interest in heart so do not lose heart and if you know someone who's going through this please share this video with them you know it might be encouraging to them it might lift their faith okay yeah this is where my video ends i really hope you guys have been encouraged i hope you've been blessed and if you have any questions any comments any contributions please feel free to comment feel free to ask and i'll surely respond otherwise i really hope this video has blessed you guys if you loved this if you liked what you see please be sure to like please leave a comment and please subscribe okay also share this video with whoever you think it might help. i'll see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching i love you guys so much let's get to 500 subscribers bye